I am sorry. Can I enter? I have a gun too. Je stranger to show up here. Je prends plus de chance depuis que ça rôde dans ce bout-là. J'ai ma carabine au bout du doigt et puis bang 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 si ça s'approche. <laughs> yep, you're very funny. Scares the living crap out of me. Do you mind if I steal some of your stuff? Hope you don't. Because I'm gonna do it in front of you while you have a gun. C'est encore beau. Tout ce qui est vieilli est bien meilleur. <laughs> I see. I took your bottle. Hope you don't mind. C'est vrai, le jeune, que tu te promènes quasiment à Bobette. Une bonne police, ça te fait pas de tort. Mais je dois te dire une chose. Dans ton coin de pays comme Paris, on n'a rien sans rien. Et où, mon caribou? Where's your caribou? I don't know. This? I'm just gonna chill here. Dans mon temps, c'était comme sous l'image. On était vrai, fier, fort, puis on avait le bon lieu de notre bord. I see. I see, I see. Vois-tu le livre là? C'est le Wendigo. Ouais, le Wendigo. Un guerrier qui devient un loup pour se venger de sa grosse peine. Don't mind me as I look through your stuff and read your journals. There was a time when hate waged war. Our hunters could decimate the great wolves who had taken our children. Our warriors. I'm reading. Excuse you. Our warriors could snap the necks of the cowards who had reached for our supplies. The deafening sound of broken bone breaking was enough to satiate the hate, and the rivers of blood would express our remorse and apologies. Thus was balance maintained. Then came the whites. The legend of the Wendigo dates back to a time before what anyone but the tallest trees can remember. A time of great cold and great inspirations. When the ships came and spewed men and their fire cannons, plagues and spinelessness. Balance broke forever. The dead were piling up on our ancestral lands. Too many bodies covered in moss, too much blood spilled in our stone. Our bone-breaking hate did not suffice any longer. One day, a young warrior who had lost everything, nieces, brothers, parents, and hope, fell to his knees in the middle. <laughs> fell to his knees in the middle of a small clearing, covered in the blood of his fiancé. Oh my. Killed after having crossed the path of some whites passing by. That's horrible. He had seen everything and called out to the great spirit. Called out to him with words that came so naturally to him. Words that could only create a great river of blood and guts and a terrifying roar of screams. He called out to him for a force that no one had ever had had that before. He became Wendigo. The whites were decimated under the icy claws of the Wendigo. The great tide of blood even pushed a few ships back out to sea, but the Wendigo was not yet done with his vengeance, for as long as the heart of one of his fiancé murderers still beat on Cree territory, he would prevail. The elders say that it was the force of the ancestors returned to nature that turned a young warrior. In this clearing, where many ancestors had been buried in centuries past, a clearing now covered in blood spilled unjustly in time where too many bodies were being buried, the ancestors heard the cries of the young warrior. Only in a remarkable time like this could the Wendigo have been born. His vengeance satiated, the warrior became Wendigo, went to rest forever. His frozen heart melted and disappeared. 
Much like real snow come the spring. The storm that had befallen the Cree lands faded as well. There was much celebration. Balance had been restored, but the whites came back too. White hatred is never satisfied by rock and bone turned to dust. They arrived by the hundreds, armed with guns and torches, burned down every village, raped every woman, smashed the head of every newborn, tortured every man that fell into their grips. Oh my, that is horrible. Never before had unbalanced been so deep for the Cree people, and ever since, it has been told that one should be satisfied with the rivers of blood brought by hatred, despite the wrongfulness done to them. Because remarkable hate comes at far too steep a price. The Windigo was never invoked again, but in the hearts of the Cree people remained the fear that one day a young warrior would once again call out with remarkable hate. Because they know, for the wisdom brought by this legend that the Windigo would prevail, but that this victory would come at a great cost. The whites would come back, and whites would rule. None would be spared. Okay, so we're dealing with a Wendigo. Also, I was trying to read. You have to interrupt me, okay? I well, I don't appreciate that, okay? Oh, if you say so. I see. Hey, la Corivo, Batesh, ça te passe l'envie de te marier, la Corivo. A tuer tous ces maris, squick, les uns après les autres. Pas de pitié dans le mariage. I see. Well, at least I'm not alone. Oh. <laughs> Can you do everything at the same time? Well, it was uh, nice meeting you. I'm sure it was. Um, I'm gonna leave you to your things. Was uh, good meeting you. Thank you for not shooting me. Although you almost did. Somebody's still alive, at least. So that's a... That's a plus. There should be one more... Or two more places to go here. As soon as I get out, I go right. There, Carl had fed his mind. But had forgotten the harsh reality that his body also needed nourishment. Especially in the dead of winter. Oh, I gotta eat? That's the thing, right? Uh, One moment. Let me actually get out. Darn it. Okay. I should have some food with me. I had a steak before. Consumables. No. Uh... Inventory. I know I had a steak. I took a steak before. Steak. Oh, that's to throw, not to eat? Well, I mean... Darn. Um... Hold on. Consumable. Beer bottle. Is this good enough? Uh, does that count as food? I don't know. 
Not sure. Hope it does. Because, uh, that's all I had. Could have eaten that steak, but no. That's not an option. Is this the place? That is the place. Okay. See if there's any. Oh, tomate. I saw that. Okay, the Wendigo keeps going that way. I'm gonna keep that. I'm just guessing that those are the traces of the, the Wendigo. The red ones that you can only see in the picture. Oh my. House of the Patriot. Oh. Please don't shoot me. Oh, that's a big one. Keeps going that way. I could follow the prince of the wolves. These cans are floating. With a homemade shooting range such as this, it wasn't hard to imagine a stray bullet ending its course inside the flesh of an unsuspecting passerby. Granted, Carl thought, there wasn't much in the way of passersby around here. Well, I don't know if somebody goes like... ...behind this. Why would they do that? This is like private property anyway, right? Oh, shoot me! The place looked more like a pigsty than a house. A heavy stench of curdled milk, cheap alcohol, and boiled cauliflower filled the air. Huh. Okay. Let's see what's going on in here. Rock music invaded the minds of men even in the remotest of places. The man didn't own a turntable though, so there's that going for him. <laughs> he just got the, the CDs without being able to play them. At Asian Bluin, seems like that pig had a name after all. Calling a little pig seems like a little bit offensive. Also, I don't know if you, should, if you should use pig as an insult, you know. Pigs are cute. The rag reeked of fermented vomit. Uh, the... I wondered how one could bear to live in such gross and horrid conditions. Maybe he didn't get a choice. Carl figured this recipe wasn't meant to yield a refined nectar. White whiskey, too much isn't a valid quantifier for that. Cherry wine for added mellowness. Very bow traditional recipe. Oh, so curry bow is white whiskey and cherry wine. Didn't the dude, the dude want some? The other dude? Prepare curry bow. Ah ha ha. I can make it. Drawers are overrated. Carl knew right away that the owner of this place wasn't a copper collector. No, this was a junk man's base of operations. The guy definitely seemed like quite the expert in scavenging scrap metal, with or without permission, surely. In the right hands, red metal could sell like hotcakes. I see. You had to be out of your mind to cook up white whiskey at home. The all surrounding stench of alcohol alone was probably enough to gas a man to death. Sheesh. Gun rack. Gun rack. Hmm. 
Where's the guns? Also, I'm missing some stuff for the caribou. Is are you the thing that I'm missing? Why wash dishes when clean ones are within reach? Okay, I don't, I don't know. Okay, listen, this guy might not have been the cleanest person at all. Yeah, there's no doubt in that, but I'm not here to judge. I'm here to steal his recipe for caribou and maybe I can give it to that old man. And he was like, hey, I want some. And then I can be like, I got you some. And he can be like, thanks. And then we can be friends. You know? I feel like friendship is something we I really need in this uh, current situation that I find myself in. If Carl had at any point wished to get his hands on some caribou, he couldn't have wished for better than a distillery like this one. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm trying to get, actually. See, the problem lies in the fact that I'm missing some of the materials. Because, um... It said... Somewhere... Somewhere. Okay, so I have some files in the biography that I need to read. Jules Lachance. He's a wretched man. Misery rains on him like galls on leftovers. I'm sure of it. Misery struck again on the poor man. He is now imprisoned in ice. He tried to escape, but it was too late. I think he was being stalked by wolves. And... Yep, I saw that. Alexander Blaze. This man sure works hard to provide for his family. He has a seasonal job at Clothier at Phil's, a logging company. With Wilfred, Alexander tried to warn Jills of the dangers awaiting in sound Maniston. Sometimes, trying is not enough. Louise Blaze. Shy woman, worried about the drama hitting her family again. Her first concern was her husband. It appears that she migrated towards North Maniston with her son and a friend. The day before I arrived. Can't say more than that. Martin Blaze. The day before I arrived, he wrote a letter to his friend Marie. This letter got lost under the furniture, but I know that Martin had no idea how serious the situation was. Naivety of a child is a gift sometimes. Dr. Claude Beaupre. The doctor became somewhat of a misanthrope following his wife's death. However, he treated his patients with professionalism. In remote regions, medicine could be very personal. His patient files show how emotionally involved he was towards them. He knew my client, W. Hamilton. I can't say if he liked him for his personality or his money. Old Rosé. According to his medical file, this great war veteran is an immortal soldier, retired in the north. That even alcohol and tobacco can kill. Stashing as it was in his youth. And then, Region Blowen. This man is a crook. No scoundrels like him. They only care about the laws they can break. Maybe violent, surely disagreeable. And then, Lore, female unknown. Seems something terrible happened to her. Her case is shrouded in mystery. I'd bet my bottom dollar she wasn't from around here. Needs more research. These are all the photos I took of the prince. See, I want to make the thing, the caribou. I don't know what the recipe for that is. Documents. Caribou recipe. There we go. So I need white whiskey and sherry wine. White whiskey, sherry wine. White whiskey, sherry wine. Do I have any of that? Okay, I don't have it at all. So I'll have to find it. Then come back here and make it. So can I actually follow these tracks is the real question. The answer seems to be no. 
So for now, just gonna go back. What is that flag? Carl shivered as he saw the emblem. The Patriot flag, used during the 1837 rebellion and which had resurfaced in 1970s Quebec, flown proudly by the FLQ terrorist groups. This flag meant bombs, kidnappings, threats in the papers. It was a sign of rebellion. Well, that's probably not nice. To say the least. Okay, let's go to the bottom. Wait, what is the dotted line? And why is it connected to the little... Island? Hold on. Maybe there's a way for me to reach it. A little dotted line right there. That leads to the little island. Is there like a little bridge? Or something? The water isn't frozen, so it's not like I can just walk on it. Oh, that's just... That's just the direction I'm looking at. Okay. Okay. Never mind. That was just a little confusing. Fortunately, my car still runs. I have not turned this off once. Since I have arrived here. Ow. Probably for the best. Okay, so now I gotta go left. That map is really convenient. What is gonna be up here? I wonder. I wonder, I wonder. Maybe some new story stuff. Maybe some new clues as to what is going on for the weather. The Wendigo, specifically. Did I pass something? I'm just gonna go look at that real quick. Might be important. Might not. Who knows? Some wood. Some hardware, whatever that means. Can I take the shovel? My inventory is full. I already have that. It's just a bunch of wood. Never mind. Nothing of importance. So, deposit, I guess, the empty bottle, deposit one of the painkillers, deposit water bottles, those seem to be heavy, and then deposit one of the first aids, deposit hardware, whatever that is. Lugs are apparently heavy. So also deposit those. Okay. I'm just gonna keep going until the end of the road and see what's going on there. The driving feels really peaceful. Very nice. Also. I saw something up here. Yep, that's something I want to take a picture of. Uh, pretend I can't read that. Letter for Lamar. Oh, that was weird. Okay. Dear Mr. Lamar, here is the spark plug you ordered for your Olympic ski do. This model, being very popular, has made it difficult to find the brand new part as quickly as usual. Thank you for choosing the Garage Pot Van and Fields in Shibagamo. Sincerely, Gaetan Putvin. Uh, uh, okay, is there... It was so cold. Already Carl did not feel his toes anymore. <laughs> yeah, I gotta start heating myself up in a moment. But first... Picture. That way. You see?
Hmm. Can I enter this place? A mouse garage. There has to be an entrance. Come on. Okay. Eh. Eh. Hmm. Well, that keeps going that way. But I don't have... I don't want to die of cold, if possible. There might be an entrance on the other side. Like, up and around. Oh, ho, ho. Would you look at that? Convenient. Whoa, okay. Well, I'll do that in a moment. I don't, I actually don't want to die. Hamilton is to replace, but okay, listen. I'll do that in a moment. I actually want to not die of cold first. If possible at all. I don't have log. Darn. Okay, that's a um, bit of a problem. I need log. 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 There it is. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna freeze. Okay, there we go. Oh. Okay, this is gonna be a little bit of a stopping point for me. See ya in a little bit. Okay, it's been a bit, but uh, I'm caught up with everything. What is this? I'm gonna have to look around a bunch, figure out what's going on. Uh, yeah, that's not the button. Roswell, at Amipec. Same story. Large deserts conducive to extravagant follies. Follow up on a complaint. Dear Mr. Lamov. Following up on your complaint, I'm afraid that the police cannot support your claim alleging the sudden appearance of a man who came from outer space <laughs> on your village's territory. Manifestly, what happened at Roswell in New Mexico left a deep impression on you. And we would urge you to consult a physician as soon as possible. Regarding future potential complaints, let it be known that the judicial district of Abitibi does not believe in little green men. Regards, Pierre Valjean, cleric Surete du Quebec. Oh. Okay, so somebody was like, hey, I'm seeing aliens. They're like small and green and the. Uh, the, the police was like, nah, it's impossible. Aliens can't exist. The man has a passion for intergalactic things. Back then, people were obviously scared of the Russian atomic bomb, but an invasion by extraterrestrials was a legit fear as well. Seems like the mechanic had made his choice. Oh, are these his pictures? Because if they are, that's kind of scary. So, uh, what are you? What, what are you? Polaroid film. Oh! Oh, that's cool! Oh, because he has camera stuff. Of course. Okay, so it's, um, it's a resource that can kind of refill. I was getting worried that the, I'd run down, run out, I guess, of the, of the films. One isn't enough. Why not buy eight? Right. You can just get a bunch of the cereal. That way they won't run out. What are you? Manufacturer's manual. Page one. Suspension. 
The suspension has way too many parts. Taking a puzzle apart is easy. Putting it back together is another story. I patched everything up, but the tracks, I left them close by. Ski. Don't drink and work. Don't drink and work. Don't drink and work. I'm misplacing parts of the machine. Rujin came to help me work on the machine yesterday afternoon. For the most part, he helped me chug my bottles down to the last drop. I think we tried to ski or something. Bad idea. I still haven't found that one ski we lost in the process. Huh. Body. That would make a nice beach chair pad. I just need to get all the parts to reassemble it. Electrical. This lamp is pretty well made. Suitable for use even in the harshest of winters. I think I'll place it on my top secret prototype in the garage. Space has got to be pitch black and then cold after all. Okay, so the lamp... Top secret prototype in the garage. Okay, that might be important. Steering. I'll have to hurry and fix this machine if I'm to travel around the powder snow all winter. Alright, I've managed to untangle and replace the brakes cable. That on time for October. Now, how about a nice and light blanket of early snow to let the fun begin? Notes. December 1969. Nice. Stunts. They're a blast when you're 12 and you go ahead and break your brother's old bicycle, I suppose. Well, I managed to damage my beautiful brand new snowmobile after only two days of acrobatics. Fixing it up will take a while. I'm thinking a year at the very least. Damn it. March 1970. I need to get my hands on that yellow suit, including the helmet that goes with it. Just like in the ad. I'll order them from the bay. September 1970. I think I'm done. All that's left is, uh, one, install the parts, two, get the spark plug I've ordered back in August and still haven't received, three, find the snowmobile's ignition key, I think it's on my bunch of keys, which should be on the generator powering my top secret workshop down south, in which I'm working on my equally top secret machine. Anyways, gotta find that key. Now that I've siphoned off the snowmobile's gas to feed my truck, I'll have to refuel it if I'm to wander the snowbanks at some point. Huh. Okay, so... This might come in handy... If... I ever need a snowmobile. So, what is this? Weird stuff. Kind of a crossing between a colander and a hairdryer. What was it for? To play telepath? To protect against nuclear waves? How oh, is it one of those tin foil hats that crazy people uh supposedly wear? Um This is a mess and you have a lot of like drawing of this one girl. These scribblings were undoubtedly the mark of a tormented mind. Something wasn't right in the poor mechanic's head. Huh. Yeah. If some daring person could manage to get their hands on the missing parts, Carl was willing to bet that the craft would have taken flight. Spaceship blueprint. So... Huh. He was actually... building... a UFO? Garlic to repel vampires or else. I see. I see. Well, I mean, uh, to each their own, I guess. What about? I'm not gonna pick this up. Oh no! Okay, only one of them is important. Hammer. Cool. I don't know what you do with this, but I have it. And in there. And up here, I could drink some, uh, Pona Cola, maybe. Why do you have socks in the... I'm confused. Why are the drawers not in the drawer slots? What is going on over here? This place is a mess. Whoever lived here... Dude, you suck. 
apparently Lamas is a rock collector. A rock? Co oh. These? Oh. So, um... What is, what, is, what is with that? How do you open that? How do you access that? That's just poor planning on your part. Mr. Lamoth. If that is your real name. Stealing road sign is prohibited by law. Oh! Oh yeah, I didn't see that. <laughs> well, maybe he made one. Maybe it's just a... Uh... A guy that is really good at making things and has a lot of like uh, pots and pans that are exactly the same because who needs variety in size when you can just not have it Ugh. that is always disturbing rations there's a lot of food in here wait any of these of these or something no okay Oh, what are you? Oh, I got a snowmobile ski. <gasps> Am I gonna fix it? Am I gonna fix the snowmobile? Perhaps someone was expecting an important call. In any case, that person's in for a long wait. Carl already noticed that telephone services weren't provided in this area. Um, this is also not connected to anything. Be it power or phone line the milk was sorted by color from the whitest to the greenest or in other words from the freshest to the sourest uh. Uh. black black headlight okay are you the snowmobile By following the plan, Carl was led to believe that the snowmobile's parts had to be scattered about in the vicinity. Oh my god, I'm gonna fix you so good. Oh, you're gonna get so fixed. Oh, it's gonna be great. Taking you out for a ride. Okay, let's see. Is anything up here? Mowing the lawn is unnecessary at this time. You are correct. I'm surprised this umbrella stayed here instead of just being flung away by the wind. Okay, I'm taking that. Carl hadn't lived up to his good finder reputation. He still hadn't found any of the wealth contained in Lamotte's lands. Colors are always welcome in a monochrome word. Oh. Oh, that. Yeah. Hmm. Well, I mean... I got the bench. Replace that. There we go. There's progress. Oh, I need two of the skis. Right. Can't just place them one by one. Is there anything on top of the roof? This is probably very dangerous, to say the least. But uh, oh, seems like the elements showed mercy to those nice and solid-looking planks. Wow, I have superpowers. I don't know how I. Managed to build that and keep it in <gasps> tact. Oh gosh. Anything up here? Nothing? Oh. Wait. This has to be important, right? Right? There is no way this not. Come on. Okay. Maybe I need to get something done inside first. Yeah, probably. Is this my car? This is not my car. Anything in here? No. Right? Inside? Nope. Okay. Does so any of the cars have anything? Uh, oh, open. Oh, there's the other ski. 
good. What good was a motorless car? The mechanic sure had an odd way to go about repairing things. He probably unmotored it to build a snowmobile. Place the skis. There you go. I don't it have was the truck. So cold. Already Carl did not feel his toes anymore. Oh yeah, I should probably go back in and warm myself up. Yep. Okay. I'm gonna check inside there in a moment. But first, give me that sweet, sweet warmth. Ah, nice. Okay. Warmth has been obtained. How about in here? Oh. I guess I'll touch it. Pick, pick, sh yep. Uh, yep. Keep it. So, is there another way in? Because that was the, the, the thing. What's called the, the thing. You know, the thing. The... Whoops. That. Can I open? Oh, I can just open it. Okay. Another worrisome victim of this ice. This one seemingly petrified in action. The poor man, before being frozen solid, seemed to have been defending the entrance to his cabin. But from what? Time to find out. 